Hello, I'm CJ Willerman. Don't forget to subscribe to our show. Now let's get into it. Islam is not only the world's fastest growing religion, but also it will be the world's largest within the next two decades. There's just nothing that can stop Islam from owning and controlling the future. The data speaks for itself. But that said, it doesn't mean Muslims won't be spared from the inevitable backlash that will arise from regimes that view Islam to be a threat to their repressive rule particularly because Islam unifies and mobilizes people like no other ideology or belief system, which is why authoritarian regimes from China to Israel, from Iran to the Arab Gulf, view Islam with a suspicious eye or as a force to be monitored and controlled, which explains why we have seen the globalization of the war on terror and why the governments of Muslim majority countries count among the worst purveyors of Islamophobia. Put simply, Muslims are being persecuted jailed and executed merely for expressing their religious beliefs and even in Muslim majority countries. This has been happening for years, but now their repressive overlords are getting their grubby hands on invasive surveillance technologies that are designed to shrink the space where Muslims can freely practice their religious faith. Now, were you to ask me what constitutes the single greatest threat to the Islamic religion today, I would answer your question with two words. Digital authoritarianism. Before the internet, dictators focused on tools of physical repression. Now, digital tools give authoritarian governments and like-minded leaders new opportunities to repress and disrupt. This is known as digital authoritarianism. Countries like China, Russia, Iran, and Saudi Arabia use these tools to surveil their populations for signs of dissent and to detect political opposition. It's impossible to talk about the consequences of digital authoritarianism on Muslim populations without talking about two countries in particular, Israel and China, because both have tested and perfected the use of invasive surveillance technologies on their respective restive Muslim populations. China and Xinjiang, and Israel in Palestine. I wish I could say I was shocked to find out that Israel's techno dystopia is testing out remote controlled guns with AI tracking systems on civilians in the West Bank. They've just installed one in Haida refugee camp pointing directly at the entrance to the Palestinian neighborhood. This same spot where an Israeli sniper shot dead a 13 year old boy and regularly fires at kids. I guess Israel's massive wall, armored military jeeps, snipers, foot soldiers, and six watchtowers surrounding the area just wasn't enough defense against the scary Palestinian kids with rocks. Here's a rare glimpse into the kind of all-encompassing mass surveillance systems Uyghur Muslims endure in Xinjiang. To be in Xinjiang means being checked every day, multiple times a day. When you go to a market, when you drive a car, when you take a train, even your smartphone is checked. As reporters, we were stopped dozens of times by police in just a few days. Our interviews were interrupted. We were detained and chased out of town. Here's a look at what Palestinians endure under Israeli occupation in the West Bank. The streets are covered in CCTV cameras and facial recognition cameras that give the Israeli military and the intelligence forces a full 24-7 and encompassing view of Palestinian life in the city. I think the best word for it is carceral. The feeling that prison is not within a bounded space, but it follows you wherever you go, into the city's streets, in your home, into your bedroom, and that there's no escaping it. These surveillance technologies have become prized tools of every dictatorship in the Muslim world, particularly regimes that were almost toppled during the Arab Spring by pro-Islamic and pro-democracy movements that successfully harness the mobilizing capabilities of social media platforms. Everything in the Arab protests of 2011 started after the images of Mohammed Bouazizi setting himself on fire were shared on Facebook. In the months that followed, protesters across the region did the same. They documented government brutality, their protests, their solidarity with one another, and sent it to the world. Poor in quality but strong in content, those videos and images ultimately helped to galvanize people who flooded the streets. But before we go on, we urgently need your help to counter injustices in the Muslim world, and we can't continue this effort without you. So please consider supporting my journalism at patreon.com slash cjwellerman. 
Our program is made possible only because of the support we receive from our wonderful patrons. And you'll be helping me bring these stories to a wider audience. So please join them in helping me bring these stories to a wider audience. Thank you. Now back to our show. The Arab Spring gripped every dictatorship in the Middle East with a high degree of paranoia. This has not only led to a crackdown on social media, but also the adoption of invasive surveillance technologies to monitor and crush all potential dissent. Which is why one of the first things Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman purchased when he came to power in 2017 was the Israeli spyware Pegasus for $55 million. He used this tool to track down and assassinate Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. A few years ago, I set the goal for Israel of becoming one of the top five cybersecurity powers in the world. An Israeli surveillance software tool capable of accessing microphones, cameras, and other data. One Saudi dissident says he spoke to Jamal Khashoggi regularly about Riyadh's use of technology to crack down on critics. The Saudi regime is also using Israeli and Chinese surveillance technologies to wage a war against the country's most prominent Islamic clerics, scholars, and activists because they speak out against human rights abuses in the kingdom. Mohammed bin Salman became Saudi Arabia's crown prince and de facto ruler in 2017. Three months later, Saudi authorities began a series of wide sweeping crackdowns. The first target was Salman al Auda, a renowned Muslim scholar with a large social media following. In the early hours of September 10th, he was arrested from his home and accused of inciting people against the kingdom's rulers. Since then, dozens of professors, preachers, lawyers, women's rights activists, economists, business people, and journalists have been locked up as the crackdown grew wider. al Auda now faces the death penalty. After all, the Saudi regime has made no secret of its intent to de-Islamize the country with the goal of turning the kingdom into a quasi-European state to make it more appealing to Western tourists. The world. Bin Salman has also sought to restrict the Islamic influences in Saudi Arabia. He passed a law in which loudspeakers of mosques can no longer be used for Quranic recitation and the call to prayer can only be made at one third of the volume of loudspeakers. The idea being that Bin Salman wants to reduce the volume of Islam in Saudi Arabia while increasing the volume of the concerts and the giant raves. Bin By selling invasive surveillance software to Arab Gulf regimes that broadly support Israel's foreign policy objectives, Israel increases its influence and power in the region for the use of proxy policing. In other words, Israel is exerting covert control over targeted Muslim populations in the Middle East through the sale of these surveillance technologies. I mean, let's not forget that the procurement of Israeli mass surveillance technologies was one of the primary reasons why Arab Gulf regimes chose to normalize relations with the apartheid Zionist state in 2020. And now the government of every Muslim majority country is getting in on the act. They want these tools to stay in power. And as we saw during the Arab Spring, the number one threat to their oppressive rule is organized Islamic institutions. Last month, the Jordanian government passed into law a cybercrime bill that's designed to criminalize free speech, particularly anything that's critical of the regime. You can be sure Islamic clerics and scholars will be most under threat here because of the influence and prestige they hold amongst the Jordanian people. And if this trend continues, then I'll forecast where all of this is heading. Where we are going is that Islam will come under full control of authoritarian states that view the religion to be a threat, which means the spaces for Muslims to practice Islam freely will continue to shrink, like they have shrunk in Palestine, Kashmir, India, Arab states, and East Turkestan. It won't be long until the majority of the world's Muslim population are tracked and monitored 24-7 the same way Uyghur Muslims are by the Chinese government. The Chinese government has uh, uh, control of every single moment of our conversations, what we're watching, what we're saying to each other, and what we're reading. They can uh, monitor that. Because of this app, we can't even use the Islamic word like Salam Alaikum or Khuda uh, Hafiz or that kind of, uh, all those uh, religious related words are banned if you do use those words. And couple minutes, uh, police comes and uh, take you to the detention camps. This is why we must raise our voice for Muslims who live under the rule of authoritarian regimes, like those in the Middle East 
and illiberal democracies like those in India and Israel. We must raise our voice because they have had theirs taken away. And this show is fully committed to doing exactly that. Anyway, that's my time for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And we kindly ask you please support our effort to expose and confront injustices in the Muslim world by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ Wellerman. We can't produce, sustain and grow the show without your help. And we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, wherever you are and stay blessed. Thank you.